What's up everybody, Liam Clistrom here for another awesome Redshift tutorial. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at PsyOps Crypto Mat and how you can do object passes with ease inside of Fusion and After Effects. So let's jump into it. All right, so before I jump into anything, I just want to give a shout out to PSYOP, who has worked with Fusion and Nuke and internally to create CryptoMat. So um, if you go to github.com slash PSYOP slash CryptoMat, you can download CryptoMat and install it in Fusion or Nuke. There's a beta out for After Effects, which you can get down here for Windows and Mac, and you can walk through the installer for that. I'm not going to go through that, but I am going to show you both how to use CryptoMat in Fusion really quickly and how to do it in After Effects as well. So first off, let's jump into Cinema 4D. So getting started with CryptoMat inside Cinema 4D is really easy. Redshift has made it pretty simple. It's just like one selection in the render settings and your AOV settings. So to get that started, we'll just come into our render settings. You can come over to the AOV tab and select it from here and just do CryptoMat or you can use the AOV manager, which is a lot simpler to use. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, you can just drag and drop things and then clip, click on what you need. So once you drag that in, there's only a few selections. So there's mesh ID, material ID, object ID, and user attribute. So mesh ID is really anything that has geometry, it's going to treat as uh, a pass. So Let's say if I had this drone here broken into each object, so say the the blades here, the antenna, etc., those would all be considered its own pass. Which, if you're working with really complex things, uh, say you have a robot with multiple pieces and you don't have it baked down like this, that makes it really nice if you need to throw something on an arm and mat that out or uh, work on very specific parts. So that makes it really easy. If you wanna work with groups, I haven't done this test yet, but I'm pretty certain that nulls automatically group things too for meshes. So that way you can just type in, uh, say, drone for your object selection and it would pick that. Now going back into our AOV settings, in CryptoMat, material ID is just like you would expect. So let me click on this here and you'll see every material in Redshift gets an ID number. So if I was to set this to one and this glass one to say two, when I go into Fusion or After Effects, it would choose that way by material ID. So if you have uh, like all these drones are all using the same material, it would make it really easy to just select all these drones at once. I have this floor with a little bit of glass on it, so it would be really easy just to select anything that has glass, same material, et cetera, et cetera. Object ID is just like using uh, an object buffer. So you come in and you set your Redshift redshift object tag and so I've got this as one and then these other drones are set to two etc etc so when I go in to fusion or after effects I can say okay object one I want just this matted out object two I want these two matted out and you get a little bit more control over it and then if we go back in we have user attribute where you can type in different user attributes. That's really good if you have done custom AOV passes inside your materials, it'll pull those out for you. So that's really it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit play on this and get a bucket render really quickly, just to show you what it looks like for a pass. And you're gonna see that it actually doesn't do anything. Um, it processes upon final render, so you can't actually preview it in the render view or IPR, just like you can with like a depth pass. Um, so just keep that in mind, it is working. I've, I've done this a bunch of times now as a test and it, it seems to always work. So that's pretty much all covered for the Cinema 4D side. You hit render, let it go, and then you jump into your program of choice. So next we're gonna jump into Fusion. So here we are in Fusion and you'll see on the left side here, I've got this base, which is just like a beauty pass. And then on the right is CryptoMat. So this is what it actually looks like. So 
If you want to get this installed, go check out the website I showed earlier. It's pretty straightforward. You can also use Reactor right here, and that makes it really easy too. Just do a search for CryptoMat and it will install it for you. So uh, to pick your mat selections, the way this works is you get this little position icon and you can move it wherever you want. If I hit add, there we go, I have to be selected first. If I hit add, <laughs> then it will add object ID one here. So if you remember back in Cinema 4D, I made this front one object ID one. Now if I come over here and I'm just gonna remove, oh, you have to be selected first, hold on. If I move, remove object ID one, come over here and do add, you'll see object ID two and these two get matted. And I'm just gonna remove that and then you'll see down here floor, which I have is object ID four for some reason, skipped three. So let me remove that and let's just work with the front one here. Add that in and you can just select it so it's mat only if you prefer that. I kind of like having this so you can see all the different mats available. So let's say our front drone right here, uh, we want to have it a little bit brighter, have a little bit more contrast between everything else that's going on. There's a few ways that you can work with this. First you can pull this in like here and then it automatically mats that, but you lose a little bit of control. Let's say we want to color correct this, so I'm just going to bring in this color correct node, and this will be our foreground, or background, excuse me, and then we're going to use this as our effect mask, like so. If I start to mess with, say, the gamma, see it goes down, I can bring the gamma up a little bit, and so that gives us a little bit more contrast between the background objects and the foreground objects. Of course, you can mess with hue, and saturation and everything like that and it makes it super simple that's it you know more doing like giant object buffers and having say 50 object buffers because you've got so many scenes right there it's all kept really neatly right here in crypto mat so let's say we want to update this and change it i'm going to go ahead and clear this out and we'll move this here and we'll add it for object id2 you'll see it just adjusts right away makes it super simple if a client comes back and you say well you know what maybe the back one should be brighter and we'll keep the for foreground darker it's just that easy again come in make those changes and you'll see it will update everything um, of course you can do more passes for like emissions so that way you can mat that out there if you want to keep those red and however you want to adjust things and build up your comp so now let's go ahead and jump into after effects and take a look at crypto mat in there so inside After Effects, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like working in Fusion and Nuke, or if you've ever done compositing inside of After Effects, you know, you bring in all your files, all your passes, and then you put them into a comp. So that's what I've done here. I've got our beauty pass. I've got this crypto map pass, and here they are inside this comp right here. Now you're probably seeing that this is black here, and if I turn this on, this turns black. Don't be alarmed by that. That is mostly because no offense to After Effects, it's not like a true, true compositor. It doesn't see all the details uh, that Fusion and Nuke do, so you're not gonna get all those colors, and you have to put on the CryptoMat effect before you get that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in through the effects panel, come up to effect, 3D channel, and you'll see CryptoMat in here if you've installed it. If you haven't installed it, go back to the beginning of the video and check out the PSYOP GitHub page. But CryptoMat is made by the same people as the Extractor plugin, so just like you would add Extractor to do object passes, it's the same idea. They're, they're treating it very much the same way, so we'll just do CryptoMat right there. And then we get all of our colors. One of the downsides, too, about using After Effects is that you can't just like pick whip stuff or have a selector the way you can in Fusion and Nuke. You actually have to know your pass IDs. So I believe it's just object ID underscore one for my front one. Let's see if I'm correct on that. There we go, yep. So you have to type everything in and that can be a little bit tedious, um, especially trying to remember what every pass is and every little nuance thing and you might be hopping back and forth between programs. So I'm hoping that they'll update that. I also, I don't know what layer and manifest is because I only just installed this and kind of ran with it and expected it to be the same way it was with Fusion. Um, so read the manual, of course. So read the manual, of course, and uh, dive deep into that if you if you want to use After Effects. Um, I'm, I'm going to push that you guys use Fusion, but this is how you get started with it. So down here, you're going to go down and choose a Luma Mat, 
And then you can see that we've got this isolated there and then we can go ahead and throw like an exposure on this and turn that down, maybe offset a little bit. And then you'll see we start to get some of these coming through back there. Um, so you, you probably have to play with it a bit. Maybe you have to do like uh, a pre-comp with everything too, but you get the idea. It's like I said, a little bit easier to handle inside Fusion. All right, that's it for this one. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and hang out with us on Redshift Thursdays. They happen every other Thursday. Come into a live chat, ask me questions, hang out, talk about what's going on with Redshift, see if there's any updates that have come out. If you see something on Instagram and you wanna know how to make that inside Redshift, I try and break those down and go through it as well. As always, thanks so much for supporting me and I'll talk to you soon. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny, all right. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel. I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hasenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammert, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.